Good evening, family. Yay, it's so nice to see your faces. I know you guys get to see ours every week that you choose to tune in, but it is so, so amazing to be able to look out and see all your faces. So thank you so much for coming. I think this is fantastic. The weather is beautiful, praise God, amen. So beautiful. So I'm super happy, and those of you that couldn't make it that are on Facebook, thank you for joining us, Facebook Live. Um, just a few announcements. Number one, I wanna uh, say a big shout out to Kathy Brown who made these nice masks for us. Yeah, Kathy Brown. Um, I'm taking mine off, I'm outside and I'm six feet away from everybody, so I'm gonna take mine off. But I just wanted to show it off to you how cool these are. You do not need to wear a mask if you're outside and six feet away from each other. But please, if you decide to, uh, if you need to come in, if you need to use the restroom, you may. But we just ask that you wear a mask inside. Um, if you don't have one, if you didn't bring one with you, we have masks up here that Kathy Brown has made. And you can wear it inside and you can take it home with you. So... That's exciting, yeah? Yes. 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 So again, I really, really thank you guys for coming out. This is fantastic. A couple other uh, announcements. Larry's going around passing out a couple things, our envelopes. Uh, you may put your tithe and offering in there. Whatever you feel God has led you to give, listen to God. He's taking care of you, right? Has God let you down this week? No. no. He takes care of us, and he will always take care of us. And so we need to remember to give back to him what is his, which he asks us to give 10% of our income. So go ahead, put it in the envelope. Larry will go around later and collect them from you guys, along with, yay, you get to uh, our connection sheet. You get to fill one out this week for real and put it in. So if you have prayer requests or concerns, put it on the back. We, we are praying uh, weekly for you. Um, so write down anything you would want to pray for and uh, give it to Larry along with the tithes and offering. Those of you who are on uh, Facebook Live, you can send your uh, tithes and offering to 135 West River Street or you can do it on uh, Shoreline, no, help me out guys. ShorelineChurchAlpina.com and you can uh, hit a button there and give online. So, it's a beautiful day today and we're outside and we're supposed to do this again tomorrow at 11 a.m. So let's pray all night tonight that it does not rain and that the weather stays nice and that Joe doesn't get soaked up here because we'll all be safe in our cars but poor Pastor Joe has to stand out here and preach. So. Uh, let's pray tonight that it doesn't rain, at least from 11 to 12.30, you know, in that time limit there, where we can come out and come together and uh, worship together. Tuesday, we're still doing family time at 6 o'clock, but it is still online on Zoom. So go on your uh, Shoreline Facebook page and find the link to click on to go on to the Zoom on Tuesday nights and also on Wednesday nights for Breaking Chains. We still want to see your faces online. We still want to connect with you during the week. So um, if you have ac access to a computer or a phone that you can hook Zoom up to, please join us on, uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday evenings, both at 6 o'clock. And then next Saturday here, maybe we can do this again. I think this is fantastic. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you one thing, I feel way better, and I, I gotta say, I'm sure Pastor Brendan will too, speaking to people who are like nodding and like, yeah, and amen and I can't see that on the, on the Facebook Live, so it gets a little like nerve-wracking sitting there like talking to a wall. Uh, <laughs> it's been a hard few weeks for me anyway, but so looking at your faces, this is way better. Um, I do have a devotion that I want to read to you. It's out of this book, Take It Too Far, that I told you guys about a few weeks ago. 
And the take it too far that I want to take too far today is the availability. We'll just wait for that loud truck. Yeah. All right. Jeremiah 23, 23 through 24 from the message says, I am not a God near at hand, God's decree, and not a God far off. Can anyone hide out in a corner where I can't see him? God's decree, am I not present everywhere, whether seen or unseen? God's decree. I see a professional Christian counselor a couple times a, a month, and there is no shame in my game. God has used counseling mightily in my life to keep me healthy and keep me using all I've got to serve and love my people well. However, something that was a little hard to get used to about counseling was this. My counselor and I don't have an equitable relationship in regard to how we listen to and serve one another. Meaning, I don't have to ask her how she's doing or how she's feeling. In fact, even if I do, it's not appropriate for her to take our time to tell me. Our relationship has individual roles, and, wh and while we're equally valuable, she's the one leading the, the, sh the shebang. I just show up and follow her lead to a healthier me. My counselor is available to me in ways that I cannot recuperate because she does not need me to be available to her. God is like that too. Sometimes we get tripped up by his continual and eternal openness to us. We forget that he isn't bound by our limitations or his expectations of us. He lives outside the limits of human time and space because he created both. When he gives us attention, it isn't taking his energy from another person or project because his attention, availability, and ca capacity are literally limitless. As we assess our own availability, we have to acknowledge that we're under human constraints. We can't be in two places at once, much less everywhere at once. We do have a, a finite level of energy and a limited capacity of how much we can do but we're also made in God's image and given his power to love and serve others. And it can be incredibly helpful for us to ask him to increase our capacity to be available. He'll help us more, be more available for those we're meant to serve. And we'll all, he'll also help us stop limiting how much we think we can give when it comes to the good of others and the glory of God. Prayerfully create a short list of people you know God has called you to be available for. Ask him, ask him to give you the capacity and energy to serve them and to be a reflection of his love for them. Now I know starting out in this quarantine, um, I was all about trying every way to be available for everybody and wanted to um, find different ways, sending letters or making uh, coffee dates online and um, you know, all sorts of things like that. And I don't know if it's the, the energy level that's going down. I don't know if it's the, um, the time that this is going on that you're just getting lazy or what it might be. But I know my energy levels have gone down. And this was just a good reminder to me that I need to pray and that God will give me that energy and he will make me available for the people that need us most, especially in these times. There are ways to reach out to people, whether it's, um, uh, via Zoom, via Facebook, via telephone, via meet up six feet apart and say, hey, um, now via this, there's many ways that we can reach out to people and we just have to the box of our norm. And we have to pray and say, God, help us. Help us to know how we can be available for someone. God will give us a person. He, if we pray for it, he will give us a person that needs us. And we just have to listen to him and then be available and willing to listen to God and, and do what he asks us to do. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then uh, we'll start the sermon, and I'll ask Pastor Brendan to come up and um, give what God has given to him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. Oh, glorious God, I just, I just can't help but just sit here and smile and, and be joyful for the sunshine and this cool breeze and and the amazing amount of people that have come to join in your worship. Lord, I just thank you so much for this church, this church family. And Lord, I just pray that you make us available for one another. Help us to reach out to one another. Help us not to be lazy. Help us not to be the one just sitting there wanting and wanting and wanting, Lord, but to be giving and giving and giving. 
help us to to give us the energy the availability the love and the the ways lord that we can reach out to each other lord i just thank you for this night and i just pray that everyone here and everyone watching online will just feel the holy spirit just shining down on them just feel a warm hug from them lord from the holy spirit lord Lord, I just ask that as Pastor Brendan comes up and, and speaks your word, Lord, that he would just speak truth and speak exactly what you want us to hear. We just love you so much, and we give you honor and glory, and we thank you for this night. And we just pray that as these people drive by, Lord Jesus, that it not be a distraction, but that they would just hear your word and just know that they are loved by you as well. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good evening, everybody. Oh, that's all right. Good to see everybody's face. You guys can hear me all good? All right, good deal. Good deal. Heather just mentioned she, she forgot. Um, but we have Bibles. So if anybody needs a Bible, it's a life recovery Bible, it's an NLT. Um, but if anybody needs one, please let us know. Uh, we don't want anybody to be without. You know, we have been blessed by a certain individual, uh, a couple that uh, um, deems it necessary to get God's word in people's hands. So please ask, don't be without, but also don't take if you don't. Um, so let us know. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, thinking about what she was just saying, counseling. Um, Ten years later, I'm still going to counseling, you know, um, so so it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to talk to people. Uh, it, it's not because there's something wrong with you, uh, you know, that so bad you have to talk to somebody. Well, the truth is, yes, there is something wrong with you. There's sin inside of you, which makes something wrong with you. But um, if you guys need somebody to talk to, need that person to speak to, find that person. Um, I know me and Pastor Joe can't be there for everybody, but there's more people than just me and him. Uh, but we would be there as much as possible for each one of you, but you guys would have to reach out. But we are here for you. Um, I just want to thank God, you know, for for allowing and helping those who ever made the decision here. Um, I, I just want to thank them as well for allowing us to be here. You know, this is awesome to be outside doing church. Uh, just hanging out. I mean, I, I think about summers of doing church this way the rest of the time, it's nice out, you know? Who knows? But, you know, the question I have tonight, though, is have you allowed this pandemic to break you? You know, ha has this pandemic broken you? Or have you allowed God to help shape you through these crazy times? Have you taken the time that was given to you to allow God to shape you, to slow down for once? I know a lot of us are so dang busy that we can't even take a second to look at our own selves in the mirror and see what's wrong. We're so busy. We don't take the time that God wants from us to allow him to shape us. Why is that? Because we are selfish human beings. When God wants us to live selfless, during this lockdown, lots of people, and it's sad, and it hurts me, and I, and I knew this was going to happen, um, but lots of people have taken their own lives. You know, I just found out uh, Wednesday night somebody took their own lives. We're at the same place I go for counseling, and uh, it's sad. It hurts. And uh, I know a lot of people are relapsing all around. Um, people are falling away from God like no other. I'm not going to act like I know why some people are falling away or taking their own lives, but I will say is God has always provided a way to connect. He has always provided a way, one way or another. In China, years and years ago, even till, to, till this day, there was underground churches to connect. Across the world, missionaries are sneaking the word into people's hands to connect. 
During this pandemic, God has provided us with technology so we can hear and see the loving voices of our brothers and sisters. You know, I'm burdened that I can't congregate with you guys afterwards or before. Um, that is when church happens. That is when true church happens. That's when we get to talk to each other one-on-one -on -one and, and talk about what's going on in our lives, to talk about how God is working through us and how God isn't working through us and how we are broken or how we are loved and who we're pursuing and who's pursuing us. And, um, but I, I am so blessed and so glad that we get to see, we get to sit here and see your faces. Just like Heather said, speaking to a wall is a lot harder than it looks. Um, that's why it's raw. You know, I, I know I screw up all the time because I screw up preaching all the time. And it's okay. You know, this is how we are. This is who we are. I, I don't expect anybody to be perfect because I'm not perfect, you know, when, when I'm talking. And, but it's still hard, and I love to see the reaction and the smiles of your faces to hear God's hope for you. You know, I believe we will always fail, we will always fall if we don't find a way to stay connected as a body of believers so we can share in the hope we have in Christ Jesus. A lot of, a lot of people say, we don't, I don't need church. I can do church by myself. No, you can't. No, you can't. You can get by by yourself for a little bit. Yes, but when's the last time you took time off of church and everything has gone well for you? Probably never. Because you fall away. You fall away from those who have the Holy Spirit. You fall away from those who love you. And you don't get to do your part as well, which keeps you going, which keeps you coming, which keeps you pursuing. The book of Acts, had some amazing stories in it about ordinary people doing extraordinary things because the, they believed in the hope in Christ. Peter preached to a crowd of Jews in chapter 2 of Acts and he says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, he pleaded with them, save yourself from the corrupt generation. Those who accepted the message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their numbers that day. And how God has given us each and every single one of you a mission, no matter what your circumstances are. It doesn't stop. Your job does not stop. No matter if you're on lockdown, no matter what, your job does not stop as a follower of Christ. Your job never stops when you're in restoration, when you're in recovery. It just does not stop. God says renew your mind daily. There's a reason for that because when you fall asleep, it's like everything goes. You got to just do it every day to keep it coming, to keep it going. It's our job to find a way to get the word of God in people's hands. It's our job to comfort those who are hurting, to share the wisdom of God with people so they can see why we have hope. Why when I fall that I can get back up and brush my shoulders off and keep moving? Because I have Christ. When we need, what we need to be is telling people about repentance and the cross and the resurrected Jesus Christ. Then we should, we should be baptizing these new believers. And those new, new believers should want to be baptized because you are a new creation. I'm telling you what. Yeah, the guy on the cross, you know, you got three people on the cross, or two people on the cross next to Jesus. 
The one, Jesus said, you know, you will be in heaven for sure with me. He was not baptized. Yes, okay. But baptism, there's something about it. Romans uh, chapter 6, 4 through 7, Paul explains it. He says, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Amen. Amen. For if we have been united with him in death like this, we will certainly also be uh, united with him in resurrection like this. For we know that our old self is crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no, no longer be slaves to it. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. The product of doing these things is eternal life. But also a beautiful relationship with God. Broken addictions. Broken chains. New life. New community. New hope. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So, you should yearn to understand and grow deeper in God's Word. I, I challenge you, even if you don't believe, take 90 days in God's Word to see what happens. Just take 90 days to see what happens. Nothing happens, you can put it down. But you got to have faith that something will happen. A new life. It is that yearning of truth we should be chasing the whole time while we are in this stay at home order. Our eyes were open on how much time we wasted, on how much resources we wasted, on how much money we wasted because we we're just out and about. God has provided everything we need. And I know it's not as easy as it sounds for those who are alone. I'm sorry, but you're not alone. You're not alone. It's a choice to be alone. God will be there with you every step of the way. It's not wherever two or three are. No, that's about an argument. That's not even about that. It's about a one-on-one -on -one relationship. He will be there for you. You are not alone. What is also amazing is the product of this new relationship is, uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 there, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Yes, we might be totally different people, but I know I have something in common with everybody here. One, we're broken. Two, we are put back together in Christ. We have those two things in common. And we know what it's like. They sold property and possessions to give to one another who was in need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. So what we are doing here today people is absolutely important and necessary so don't tell yourself you don't need church that's safe guarantee it if you fall oh well get your butt back up if you sin oh well so did i but i'm gonna work better to get get closer to god to grow that relationship 
so that holiness can live within me. So that sin doesn't reoccur time and time again. You look back. Like I said, at the times you stopped coming to church, what did that usually look like? What did your life look like without the people of Christ in it? Lonely? Lost? Broken? Unmoved by anything? Selfish? Chasing our own ambitions? Growing for ourselves, but not for anything else? Failing at everything we do? Broken relationships? Addictions, alcoholism, the list goes on. If we follow this outline here, we devote, we devote each other, ourselves to each other, okay? Whether it be on Zoom, Facebook, phone, meeting here, Saturday nights, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Sundays, whatever it be, however we got to do it, you know, whatever we got to do, dig tunnels underneath the ground and meet there, I don't know, whatever, however we got to do it. As long as you devote yourself to this and continue to be authentic when times get tough, engineer new ways to meet together, to come together, share the gospel. It is this comfort that saves lives eternally and physically. It is this that will stop people from relapsing and shooting themselves or whatever it may be. It's so important. So important. Last time I checked, 149 people died a day from heroin overdose. What do you think a life would look like if they had us? Even if they still struggle, we would know something's wrong. It is this comfort, remember, that saves lives. It is praising God and sharing in His goodness that will prepare those who suffer from addictions and so forth to stay strong and stay connected. This is how we grow. This is how we fight the darkness in this community. And this is how we will spread the unconditional love of God. This, right here. Not me just preaching, but you guys together. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. we'll be coming back together. Make sure you guys come. Bring an umbrella, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out a way to stay dry. We'll open the back of vans and, you know, however we got to do it, we'll figure it out. But come. You know, you, we're, we put so much effort into the things for ourselves. Why don't we put effort into something that's actually worthwhile? Something long lasting. Something that just doesn't go away in 24 hours, or two hours, or four hours. Let me pray, then we'll be closing. And like I said, I apologize and hang out and whatnot, you know, but it is amazing to see your face. Good to be here. Yes, good to be here. Amen. 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 Father Lord, I, I can't thank you enough for this beautiful day. I can't thank you enough for my family, my blood and those who are not, those who are washed by the blood of Christ, those who are my brothers and sisters. Thank God for this moment right here. Father, help us to stay in the moment. Help us to see what is important in life. That it has nothing to do with self. Father, I praise you for being so glorious and so comforting and so compassionate to us. 
Thank you for taking away the hurts, my Lord. But thank you for teaching me how to get through the hurts as well. Father, I ask that you be with each and one and everybody that's in the parking lot today, Lord. That you awakening, you stir a new, a new fire in them, Father, a new fervor to chase you, to share the gospel. And Father, I just ask that you heal them from any brokenness that's going on in their lives. Help them to encourage people to come together, Lord. To follow God's will, not mankind. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.